check this out, right? I got a degree in music on saxophone, conservatoire, you know, the whole lot, postgrad, jazz studies, you name it. And nobody ever taught me about this one super important technique, which is foundational to jazz phrasing. What am I talking about? Half tonguing, sometimes called doodle tonguing, sometimes called do din tonguing. Lenny Pickett called it muffle tonguing, which I really love. And it's when you leave your tongue on the reed, but not enough to stop the reed vibrating. Now, it's not just intrinsic to jazz phrasing, because everything came from jazz phrasing, your funk, your soul, all your commercial, pop music, smooth jazz, everything uses this super important technique and not enough people are talking about it. So I'm talking about it today. I'm gonna to teach you exactly what it is and then we're gonna do some great exercises so you can start learning how to do it yourself. Let's get into it. So what is half tonguing? As I just mentioned at the beginning of the video, it's where you put your tongue on the reed, but lightly. You're not closing the reed against the mouthpiece facing. You're just resting your tongue, a little bit of your tongue lightly on the reed and the reed can still vibrate, but it's like putting a blanket over a vibraphone. It kind of goes dunk, dunk instead of dong. So it mutes the vibration of the reed. Now there's two different techniques that you can use. The first technique is to put your tongue right across the whole reed, um, likely in the middle and just enough for it to keep vibrating, <laughs> but not choke off, okay? It can tickle your tongue a bit. It's a bit weird when you get used to it. The second method is to completely close one side only of the reed against that rail. Okay, one side only. And you can choose which side you feel more comfortable doing it. I would say about half people do one method, half people do the other method. That is how you do half tonguing. And when you do it, you can practice with your neck and mouthpiece. You get this kind of sound. Now, when it comes to syllables, everybody loves a syllable in jazz phrasing, don't they? Uh, a lot of people say it's an N sound N for November. Personally, uh, especially if you're doing the down the center tongue technique, I think it's more like like a th like the beginning of the. So if you're going ba da ba dee 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 dee, or that's how it feels in my mouth anyway when you actually perform it. And I think what it feels like in your mouth is much more important than singing it like it sounds because when you go dude, you know your tongue isn't necessarily doing that at all. <laughs> so I like to say which is awkward when you're singing it but when you're playing it that's kind of what it feels like to me. Right now that you know what to do here's what it sounds like and then we'll do some exercises. So when you're practicing it, it's very fiddly, and if you're not used to it, it's quite tricky. And if you put your, your tongue on too hard, the sound will stop. If you don't put your tongue on hard enough, um, your reed will, the reed will kind of kick your tongue off the reed with its own vibration, and it'll be tickly and weird. It might be tickly and weird anyway. <laughs> so uh, it takes a bit of practice. It's a subtle technique of saxophone playing. Subtle, okay? It's not like a <clears throat> stick your tongue up. No, you have to finesse it to really get it working. Let's now do some exercises so that you can practice this. Okay, the first exercise is super simple. You're just gonna practice on one note with you tongue the first note and then you half tongue. Remember, for the duration of the half tongued note, your tongue is in contact with the reed. Now here's the interesting thing. As soon as you release your tongue, which is marked as RT right there, as soon as you release your tongue, because your tongue was touching the reed in the first case, it's kind of like a de facto articulation. It's like a de facto tongued note. So the note after your half tongue note is kind of like it's well, it's half tongued, isn't it? <laughs> you might say you might say that the half tongue is because your tongue is half touching the reed. You might say it's called half tonguing because when you take your tongue off the reed, the next note is half tongued. Uh -huh. Anyway, whichever way you chop it up. So once you take your tongue off the reed. Uh, the next note, which I call release tongue, RT, is tongued. So tongued, leave your tongue on there for the half tongue. Release tongue, half tongue, release tongue. So it's, so it's going ba da 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 Let's try it. This is what the exercise sounds like. Okay. 
And then once you've done that, you move it over a variety of different notes across the horn, okay? So you go up to maybe a middle D, you do like an octave G, a high C. So mix up the note that you choose for this exercise. I put together a really cool PDF worksheet for you to download and use. Just use the link that you can see there. Click the link or click the link in the description. You just fill in your email completely free and it's got all these exercises written out for your convenience. Really cool resource. Print it off and follow along as we work through this really important topic. On to the second exercise now, and straight away we're getting into some really contextual exercises. By that I mean this exercise is in the context of jazz going to be really useful to you because it's the kind of place that you always hear half tonguing. We're going to go up the major scale with the pattern that you can see in the exercise there. Tongue the first note, half tongue, release your tongue, slur to the next group of four. Half tongue, release tongue, slur to the next group of four. So it's going. And it sounds like this. First of all, I'll play it in super slow mo for you. and so on and so forth through the exercise. Now this is what it sounds like when you play it a little bit faster. So practice it really slowly until you can get all the articulation bang on before you start speeding it up. And then you just move that and practice all your major scales exactly with the same pattern. Okay, let's now move on to number three. Okay, now we're taking this straight into a bebop context and we're adding one more factor which we haven't come across so far. And that is the fact that you can play multiple notes in a row still muffling it with your tongue. Now, if you look at the example there below, I've charted out a kind of typical cliche pattern in which you would use your half tonguing. And then you're gonna transpose this up in semitones. We start in the key of G, doesn't matter what saxophone you play, just start on the key of G. As you can see, in that first triplet, two of the notes are tongued. So you go, ta ta va ti ta ti a ti a la. First of all, I'll play it in slow-mo so you can hear it. Now listen very carefully as I play this in slow-mo. And then second half. And then immediately you're into the next key, which is upper semitone. So I'll do it ever so slightly quicker now. Still keep an eye on this articulation. When you do it yourself, make sure you do it really slow so you can nail it. Okay, I'll do that one more time, nice and slow. And the last one, that release tongue, it goes into a staccato. Okay, now we'll speed it up a little bit so you can hear it uh, more like you would play it on an actual gig. And you'll hear Charlie Parker do this a lot. You'll hear uh, Coltrane, Rollins, you hear all the great jazz players do this where they kind of skim up those ascending runs, muffling it with their tongue. And the, the top note pops out as you release your tongue. I'll do it one more time, this time moving on to the second key. <laughs> Now, 
Now, some of the advantages of using half tongue are, number one, you can keep blowing the same volume through each phrase, and it's your tongue that just mutes the notes and gives your phrases that 3D kind of light and shade where some notes pop out and others are just kind of skimmed over. Um, and that's what great jazz players sound like when they phrase from Charlie Parker, Dexter, you know, the lot, everyone does it. If you go looking for them, the videos are out there, but this is the thing that more people need to be talking about considering that, you know, maybe a quarter or something of all the notes that you play in jazz are half-tongued. Why is nobody talking about it? So I hope this, um, I hope this video has helped you start to get a grip in it. Just be aware, if you've never done it before, this is a very foreign and alien technique and it requires a lot of subtlety. So just be patient. Work through the exercises until you can get it and speed it up gradually. And remember, go and grab your free PDF worksheet with the exercises that you can work on. And the third exercise, that's an advanced exercise, okay? That is an advanced exercise, so it's definitely something to work up to in your own time. Alrighty, that is all we've got time for this week, talking about doodle tonguing, muffle tonguing, doodle tonguing, half tonguing, ghost tonguing. I didn't even mention that one. <laughs> now go and get your free PDF worksheet using the link that you can see there. It's got all the exercises written out for your own convenience. And uh, you can also check out my free one hour saxophone success masterclass, which is going to instantly change the way you practice and uh, sort out a bunch of stuff for your improvising and your technique and your sound and all these important things for your saxophone so that's my free gift to you go and check that out if you've bought me a coffee you are a tremendous person and the next read you get out of your box will be perfect without any alterations from your read kick <laughs> if you want to buy me a coffee you can use the link there thank you very much i really really appreciate it as always, there is a bonus video inside the Inner Circle, and the Inner Circle is just a warm, fuzzy, awesome place to be if you play saxophone with loads of extra content, bonus videos, guest interviews, uh, an amazing um, saxophone forum community with loads of support. There's a monthly challenge. There's all sorts of really cool stuff, and there's also blog videos following me around, doing my gigs, and learning from the pro stage. So go and check out the Inner Circle. In the meantime, make sure you practice hard, practice smart, and enjoy your music. I'll see you later, guys. Uh, in this kind of, uh, oh, it's just so waffly. All right.